Welcome to Technician's Toolbox. In this episode, we'll be using scan data to identify vacuum leaks on both MAF and speed density systems. These systems have different components and different characteristics. However, there are methods that can be used with scan data to help the technician identify if a vacuum leak exists or not. On vehicles equipped with a MAF, the MAF is used to measure the amount of air drawn into the intake. PCM then decides how much fuel should be added to the air to maintain the desired air fuel ratio. It controls this fuel amount by increasing or decreasing the fuel injector pulse width. On a closed loop system with an oxygen sensor, the oxygen sensor is mounted in the exhaust and provides feedback to the PCM as to the mixture of the burnt gases. If a rich condition is detected, a high reading will be displayed and the PCM will use fuel trims to attempt to correct for this rich condition. Likewise, if the mixture is lean, a low reading will be displayed, and the PCM will use fuel trims to correct for the lean condition. If fuel trims are positive, the PCM is correcting for a lean condition and adding fuel. If fuel trims are negative, the PCM is correcting for a rich condition and subtracting fuel. This capture is taken from a 2003 Ford Taurus 3 liter double overhead cam engine with a vacuum leak at the PCV elbow. Notice at idle, the short-term fuel trims are significantly attempting to add fuel. Long-term fuel trims are also on the positive side. The MAF is currently reading 2 grams per second. On most modern engines fully warmed up with the AC off, the MAF grams per second should read approximately the same as the engine size. So in this case, we would expect to see closer to 3 grams per second. Since we know that the engine has a vacuum leak, we can deduce that the other grams per second of air is coming from the source of the leak and not being measured by the MAF. Currently, the PCM believes that there are 2 grams per second of air being drawn into the engine and is adding fuel accordingly. However, the O2s are telling a different story. They're telling the PCM that there is a lean mixture in the exhaust, so the PCM is now adding fuel in order to keep the O2s happy. Now, with the vehicle still in park, the technician opens the throttle slightly so that the RPMs are raised to approximately 2,000. Now that the throttle opening is probably close to or larger than the vacuum leak, most of the air is being measured by the MAF. Notice that the MAF is reading 9 grams per second, the short fuel trims are only adding approximately 5%, and the long fuel trims are at zero. Now the technician applies the parking brake firmly, depresses the service brake, and puts the car in reverse. He then opens the throttle far enough to achieve approximately 2,000 RPMs. Since there is load on the engine, the throttle must be opened farther, even further masking the vacuum leak. Notice that now 28 grams per second are being measured by the MAF, and the fuel trims are even closer to zero than before. This is an effective method of diagnosing vacuum leaks on vehicles with MAF sensors. If a lean condition is indicated at idle by positive fuel trims and low MAF readings, raise the RPMs and see if the fuel trims come down, or power brake the vehicle and see if they correct even further. Here's a scan data recorded at idle after the technician has repaired the leak and reset keep alive memory. Speed density systems determine the amount of fuel to be injected based on engine speed and the amount of load placed on the engine. It determines the load by the input from the manifold absolute pressure sensor. Under low load, the engine has high vacuum, which is read as low voltage on a MAP sensor, approximately 1.5 volts. If the throttle is open due to increased load, the vacuum is lowered closer to atmosphere, and the MAP voltage will increase variably to approximately 5 volts. Significant vacuum leaks on speed density systems will lower the engine vacuum resulting in the PCM falsely thinking the engine is under load. The O2s will pick this up as an overly rich condition and negative fuel trims will be indicated. However, most vacuum leaks aren't significant enough to fool the map. Most leaks will raise engine RPMs and show up as a lean condition, thus causing positive fuel trims. In this case, it is helpful to look at the actual position of the idle air control valve. If IAC counts are low, close to zero on a scale of 0 to 255, then the PCM is attempting to lower engine RPMs by blocking off the amount of airflow through the idle passage of the throttle body. In this case, the technician is viewing scan data on a 2000 Pontiac Sunfire 2.2. 
car has a vacuum leak due to a small cracked line from the intake to the HVAC controller. Notice that the IAC counts are initially at 17, and the fuel trims are all over the place. As the technician opens the throttle, the IAC counts increase, and fuel trims are still going all over the place. This is not very helpful at this point. Here's a data capture taken after the technician repaired the leak. Notice how the IAC counts have gone from 17 to 39. This is typically more evident on vehicles with gasket failures. Many times these engines will be brought to the shop with a customer concern of high idle. Technician will quite often find that the IAC counts are at zero because the PCM attempts to lower the idle. In conclusion, on MAF vehicles, view MAF readings at idle to see if they are close to the engine size. Also check fuel trims at idle, 2,000 RPMs, and 2,000 RPMs with load. Speed density system, look at the IAC counts. If they're lower, near zero, this verifies that the vacuum leak exists. Thank you for watching this technician's toolbox video. See you next time.